Yeah. So, I, you know, I think about it as, do I have a chance to be wrong? You know, very, so if I got a big tumor burden patient and I need, you know, to pull that back, that might be a wholesale switch. Um, but if I, you know, if it's small, they had a nice response initially, well, I'm going to, you know, go slower and tweak. Well, let's go one more. Let's say it was frontline chemo plus BEV or uh, second line chemo plus a continuation of a VEGF inhibitor. Um, third line, is this where cetuximab comes in, or in a TCAN, or no? So I, the, actually, I was going to get more ones. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. So, so they got first line full fox. Call it full fox, yeah, BEV, and then second line, let's give them full theory of flibercept just for fun. Right, so now third line. So what, what else you got left? If <laughs> they're KRAS wild type, and obviously, wild type. Uh, obviously anti-EGFR therapy. The question is, do you use a monotherapy here or do you use it with the reno -TCAN? No, I want to know uh, what you and use. I use with the reno uh, because I'm, I'm convinced that your PFS will be longer. Uh, I, I think the depth of the response will be deeper. And, and uh, you know, do we have a study that has conclusively shown improvement in overall survival? No, but, but I think when you have an improvement in PFS, deeper response, to me that's important. So uh, unless there's a contraindication for arenotecan in that setting, I'm going with arenotecan and cetuximab or arenotecan penitumumab. I do not add 5-FU if they're 5-FU refractory. I'm not convinced that full theory is needed. So let's say they had just come off full theory um, and a VEGF inhibitor. You cut back from 180 to 150 or maybe even a little lower because of toxicity. They're a little worn out. And you decide to use arenotecan. Back up to 180, uh, Q3 week <laughs> dosing at 300, uh, 80 milligrams. You know, should you regorafenib? <laughs> should you regorafenib this and just you know throw throw some palliative doses in? What do you do with your arena tecan? I tend to keep the arena tecan at the same dose um, wherever no, they were getting. Wherever yeah. they were getting. Hmm. Yeah. Others? You know, I, I think one of the points when I have a patient who had full fox bath and is for argument's sake 12, 15 months on full theory. Mm. I might consider to go back to Folfox mm. and add Orbitax to mm. it. So the reintroduction of chemo is also sometimes playing a role. So back to the chest scan. Let's say they only had three months and you backed them off because they had such a nice response. It's been a while. You might come I, back. Yeah. 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 I, I think Irene Otik and Orbitax is the, uh, it's a, you, it's a, it's, it's a logical thing. But I think I sometimes reintroduce the chemo backbone when it's a long time ago. But let's say that's still an asymptomatic patient, small volume disease, you might not, though, right, right? that's correct. But if, you, if you're going for a little bit banger, yes. you'd play a harder yeah. card yeah. Uh, yeah. at that point. Chess. It's chess game, all so, right? So, Heinz, do you think that anti-HFR therapy are able to reverse resistance to oxaliplatin in a similar way that they do with the reno -TCAN? Possibly, Be yes. Mm -hmm. There are preclinical models which show that. So, and there is actually ongoing clinical trial to do that. So I think it's possible. When you look at the downstream signaling of each GF receptor, DNA repair is part of it. So, so John, the other, issue, the other part of the other play with the pawns or the rooks or whatever is, is if the patient's been on BEV for 18 months or 20 months and is now at third line, do we stop the BEV? Mm. Does TML apply to second line only, or does it apply to subsequent lines? And I, I don't know the answer, but this is a struggle. Yeah, those of us who played with Bond 2 back when we could, um, you know, that worked. And, uh, and in clinically. fact, Bond 2, which was a combination, the dual biologics, is will be tested again. Right. Yeah. Uh, many of uh, some of us, at least, believe. I certainly believe that the chemotherapy backbone may have been a problem with with the double biologics. So that will be studied again. But this is, this is a big issue, so uh, we struggle with do we stop the anti-VEGF down the, late in, go, in the going, even if we could have had an act, active regimen, did we throw it away by having the rebound, if there is such a thing, a rebound from di withdrawal of BEV. Very quick, starting down here, do you give Cetux Q2 or Q1, and what, uh, pre-meds, yes or no? Pre-meds, yes, Q2. Pre-meds, yes, Q2. Pre-meds only once. Q2. And then if they don't, you're fine. Uh, yeah. And the dose of Q2? 500. Yeah, pre okay. Q2. We, we get a kickback for parking, so I'm Q1 and, <laughs> and all of that. It's the only time you can get Washingtonians to sit down. <laughs> you, you give them a little, you know, medicine and they're cool and calm. All right, let's do the same you drill. should have done that during the shutdown. <laughs> <laughs> you, we didn't notice. That was the thing. Um, that was kind of an interesting period. So let's do the same drill.